the previous video, we started a basic CSS layout, but there's still some fine tuning to do. Let's get started. Next, let's move on to the header. First, we'll position the header to the left of the navigation using floats and margin. Additionally, we want our header to be large and visible, and we want to give it just a little bit of style. So let's do this. We'll switch over to our text editor, and we want to copy this flag once again, and we'll call this header. And first, we need to select our header, and we'll give it a font style of italic. We'll float it to the left, and we'll give it a margin of 20 pixels on the top and bottom, and none on the left and right. Now, skipping down here, we'll go ahead and style the H1 in our header, and we'll give it a font size of 3Ms, and we want to remove the default margin on the H1. Now, the final comp also includes a subheader, so we need to style that as well. So we'll skip down here and select the subheader. And we'll also remove the margin on that. We'll give it a slightly gray color. And we'll give it a font size of 1.2 Ms. And switching over to the browser and refreshing, you can see that this looks good, but we haven't touched the main content yet. Let's go ahead and style the blog post below the header and navigation. Now remember, the final site is two columns, so we need to set an explicit width on our content, float it to the left, and space it from the sidebar. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once again, we'll go ahead and copy and paste this flag here. We'll put it about right there. And skip down a few lines. And we'll change our header to read content, and we'll select our content div, float it to the left, give it a width of 700 pixels, and give it some space on the right. So if we switch back and refresh, already you can start to see the two column layout emerging. Let's style our individual blog post to better define the larger left column. So we'll go ahead and switch back to our text editor, and right below this style rule, we'll select our content div again, and select all the posts, and we'll give them a white background, some padding, some margin on the bottom to space them out, and we'll give them a border to define them a little bit better. Now we need to style the titles of our blog posts. And we want to remove the margin on those headline tags. And we'll give them a slightly lighter color than just pure black. So if we switch back and refresh, you can see that that's coming along. But we want to put the pictures on the right side. So let's go ahead and style those. All the pictures on the page have a class of pick, and we want to give them a margin left of about 10 pixels to space them from the paragraphs, and we want to float them to the right. Now this is really starting to come together, but finally we need to get the sidebar in place. Let's also give it an explicit width and float it to the left. So one last time here, we're going to copy and paste our comment flag, and we'll call this one sidebar, and we'll select our sidebar, float it to the left, give it a width of about 200 pixels, give it a white background, give it some padding, and we'll give it the same border that we gave to our blog posts. And finally, we also need to style the headline tags, and we just need to remove the margin there. Now, remember, because both columns are floated to the left and the sidebar comes after the content in the HTML markup, the sidebar will actually be to the right of the content, as you can see here. 
Just think of it as rotating our whole page 90 degrees counterclockwise. Instead of stacking all of these elements on top of one another, they're just being placed side by side in a row. Now we're almost done. Just as a finishing touch, let's try and separate these two sidebar items a bit more. To do that, I'm going to show you another handy pseudo class. First, I'll type this out and then we can go over it. So I'll switch back and we'll select our sidebar, sidebar sections, give them a border on the top. some padding on the top and here is our pseudo class of first child and we want to remove the border and remove the padding so here we're separating our sidebar sections with dashed borders on top of each section along with a bit of padding However, we don't want a border and padding to be on top of the first item in the sidebar because there's no sections above it that need to be separated. To remove that first border and padding, we're using the pseudo class first child. Basically, this expression is saying if a section inside of the sidebar is the first section, it should have the following styling. So let's switch back and refresh. And that's it. In the past few videos, you've seen that CSS is capable of quite a lot. Your imagination is just about the only limit.